Germany now for reaction. Republican Congressman Matt Gates and Andy Biggs. So looking at the latest polling data, Bernie Sanders is gaining momentum big time. Um, he is, for example, neck and neck. Uh, he may win Iowa. He's ahead substantially in New Hampshire. Uh, and boy, his fundraising is really taking off while Elizabeth Warren is tanking. And all of a sudden, they're going to be forced back to Washington in January off the campaign trail with a Senate impeachment trial. Well, perhaps Elizabeth Warren's decreases in revenue correspond with her campaign not wanting to pay her wealth tax. Uh, but I, I think that the Bernie Sanders ascension in the polls is a sign that the Venezuela wing of the Democratic Party is showing a little life here. And you just got to wonder, Greg, who's going to win this thing on the Democratic primary? Because you got Joe Biden just as the, the blundering gaffe machine that he is. You've got, you know, kind of the weekend at Bernie Sanders campaign where he's trudging along but, but gaining momentum. And then Elizabeth Warren, who I think has had her ebbs and flows. I don't see a winner in the field yet. You know, Congressman Biggs, Democrats are now openly beginning to wonder about the wisdom of Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff's and Jerry Nadler's impeachment farce um, that, that, you know, the numbers are indicating this is going to backfire. Have they created a, a political quicksand and now they've stepped right into it? Yeah, they really have. And uh, I think Nancy Pelosi's instincts were correct about a year ago when she was kind of uh, backing off. We don't want to really get going on this thing. But uh, as Matt said, the Venezuelan side of the Democrat Party in Congress said, look, no, we got to have it. And she had to cut a deal to become speaker because it was so, such a close race. She has taken the, the bull by the horns here and uh, it looks like she's going to get gored because of it. Uh, the reality is this has been a huge mistake for the Democrats. They have nothing. There are people within the Democratic conference itself that re realize that they have nothing. And it's done nothing but help President Trump solidify his position with, uh, you know, people of reason throughout the country. Congressman, are those within the Democratic Party, you just referenced them, are they angry about what Pelosi and Schiff and Nadler have done? I think some of them are. Some of them who I've talked to uh, quietly uh, aside, uh, they want this to go away. They wish it had never happened. But, but you know what? The, Nancy Pelosi's got them because she raises money for them. But the reality is many of them wish this thing would go away, and, uh, but it's not going to go away. And no. she's, it's actually going to blow up even more, I'm afraid, it, it's for them. And it's, not just, no return. it's not just that Nancy Pelosi raises money for her caucus. It's that they used that money as a political weapon against anyone exactly. who potentially would vote against impeachment. Right. Andy and I observed active threats on the House floor that <clears> if <throat> the blue dog Democrats didn't go along with the radical left of the Democratic Party and support impeachment, that they would not be supported by the DCCC. So that's the active threat. We that's will, the quid pro we're quo. We're going to pull the rug out from <laughs> under you financially and in every other way. Yeah, the only quid pro quo I observed yeah. in this impeachment process was the quid pro quo, where if the Democrats didn't line up behind Nancy Pelosi as lemmings ready to go off the cliff, that they would then be bludgeoned by their own party in primaries. Huh. Well, it may turn yeah. out to be just yeah. the opposite. Uh, Congressman Biggs, if Nancy Pelosi thought that the mere word impeachment and the vote uh, that ensued would damage the president politically. The opposite has happened here. I mentioned the poll numbers, and now the Gallup right. poll comes out, mm -hmm. and, you know, he's tied with Obama as the most ad admired man. I mean, talk he about a severe boomerang. Yeah, I don't think they could have, have uh, understood that that might happen to him. I think I thought she knew, knew at the beginning. But look, that admi most admired person poll, it, there's a lot of takeaways there. First of all, um, it means there's a lot of people who approve of the job President Trump's doing as president. But moreover, there's a lot of people who admire him personally for trying to keep his promises when he is in the swamp. When he said he's going to drain the swamp, we've seen, and I think the, the whole world has seen how hard the swamp will try to take you back down. And then I guess the other thing is you can see how divided the country really is, that Obama and President Trump would be tied uh, as the most admired men in the 2019 is a remarkable statement that our country is divided in so many ways. But uh, I think it also gets to the point you just made, Greg, that and Matt's been making this point all along as well. This is boomeranging on them. 
and it's actually solidifying and lifting President Trump up even more. Part of the theory that Nancy Pelosi is hanging on to these articles of impeachment, not transmitting them to the U.S. Senate, is she wants to prolong this impeachment notion as, as long as she possibly can, hang it over his head. But if it's not working for her and it's having the reverse effect, doesn't she want to walk that over, run it over to the U.S. Senate right now and get it over with? It's more like a hot potato than something you would want to hold on and hope that it would hatch. And I don't always agree with Mitch McConnell, but I think he made a valid point that you don't gain much leverage in threatening to withhold something that the Senate does not want. And as Andy pointed out, you've got a lot of these members in districts that were won by Donald Trump who will vote for impeachment, but who frankly want it through the legislative digestive system as fast as possible. Because, I mean, if you're one of those candidates on the campaign trail, heck, if you're one of the 2020 Democrats running for president, this has now become all-consuming. The election would be a referendum on impeachment, and right now it would be an election that the president would overwhelmingly win in the Electoral College.